Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England here in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how we make a couple of our delicious mouth-watering quiches. This first one is a classic quiche Lorraine and the second is an irresistible salmon and broccoli quiche. These are definitely in the top 10 of our customers favourites. They can be served hot or cold, you can have them as a main course like the opening image or indeed as a light snack. Right, I'll get started on this recipe. The first part is to make the pastry. Now I'll be making enough pastry for both quiches. If you are only doing one, then just half the pastry ingredients. I'll be using this kitchen processor to do mine because it's the best way to make pastry. But if you want to make it by hand, check out my chicken and mushroom pie video. I'll leave a link in the description box below. When making pastry, it's best to have everything cold. That's why I like to use my processor instead of my hands. OK, I'll add the flour, salt and cold butter to the machine and then pulse it for a few seconds until it resembles fine breadcrumbs. If the butter was soft and warm at this stage, it would just clump together with the flour. I'm using all butter for this pastry because it has a richer, tastier flavour. But you can use a 50-50 blend of butter and lard or butter and vegetable shortening if you like. Now I'll add the water in a steady flow. Once the pastry starts riding around the bowl, it's done. And there it goes. It literally only takes seconds in one of these machines. Now I lightly flour the work surface and carefully take the pastry out of the bowl, remembering those blades are very sharp. It won't be the first time I've been bit by one of these, so you be careful. Try not to handle the pastry too much, or it will become tough and elastic as the gluten strands tighten up in the dough. Now all you have to do is wrap it up in cling film or greaseproof paper and refrigerate it for at least an hour before using it. This just gives the gluten strands in the pastry time to relax and loosen up so it will be much easier to form later on. Make sure it's flat like mine, that way it will chill a lot quicker. For this recipe I'll be greasing two 20cm that's 8 inch sandwich cake tins with butter or lard. I'm using lard for mine. Obviously, if you're only making one quiche, you only need one tin. Right, onto the egg mixture. And once again, I'm making enough for two quiches, so if you're only making one, half this part of the recipe too. I'll start by adding the eight large fresh eggs to a bowl and give that a good whisk for a minute. Next ingredient is 300 grams or millilitres of single cream. That's cream with only 18% fat. I believe our USA cousins refer to this as light cream. And no doubt I'll be corrected if I'm wrong. Next add the 100 grams or millilitres of full or half fat milk. Finally add the half teaspoon each of salt and fresh ground pepper. Traditionally, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg is added to quiche Lorraine, but we're not keen on that flavour, but by all means use it if you like it. A little word of advice to the salt lovers out there. Don't add more than what's in the recipe, especially if you're making the Lorraine, because the bacon and ham in the recipe may already be quite salty. You can always add salt when it's cooked, but you can't take it out. Once that is all thoroughly mixed, pour the contents into a jug and set it aside for later. And that's another part of this wonderful recipe out of the way. Right onto the ingredients for the quiche Lorraine. I'll start by chopping the spring onions. Now these have lots of different names depending on where you are in the world. 
and to name a few, scallions, green onion, table onion, salad onion, onion stick, long onion, baby onion, precious onion, yard onion, gibbon onion, saibao and shallot. <laughs> and if yours is not there, just leave it out. The next ingredient to go into the Lorraine is eight rashers of smoked or unsmoked streaky bacon cut into what's known as lardons. In raw weight that's 120 grams or 4 ounces. Once the lardons have been cut, fry them off in a dry frying pan as shown. Once they're crispy, drain them on kitchen paper and put them aside for later. It's amazing how much fat comes out of bacon. I'll also be adding 100 grams, that's three and a half ounces, of lean boiled ham. You can buy the boiled ham, or all I did for mine was simmer a small gammon steak for 20 minutes and then diced it up. It's much cheaper that way. And the final ingredient is 60 grams or two ounces of mature cheddar or Gruyere cheese. Gruyere is the cartoony Swiss cheese with the holes in it, but I'll be using my homemade cheddar for this. I have a video on my channel, how I make my cheddar cheese, if you want to have a look at that. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Now to my personal favourite, the salmon and broccoli version. This truly is a great quiche, and bursting with flavour. Of course you can make this with fresh, skinless and boneless salmon fillet, but I think this 175 gram or 6 ounce can of prime red salmon is better. It's the right amount, it has that bit extra flavour and just the right moisture for this dish. And it works out cheaper. All I do is drain off most of the liquid. Then I tip the fish onto a plate and break it into pieces with my fingers, rather than just mashing it up with a fork. Doing it this way means there will be nice flaky chunks in the finished quiche. Right, I'll just cover that with cling film and get it in the fridge until I need it. OK, onto the broccoli florets. Now break it down to the smallest florets possible, as shown in the video, and try not to include any of the thickest stalks. They simply won't cook through in this dish. The finished weight of florets should be 100 grams, that's three and a half ounces. And the last ingredient you need for this salmon and broccoli quiche is 60 grams, that's two ounces, of grated cheddar or Gruyere cheese. Right, here we go with the pastry. It's been chilling in the fridge for the last hour. For my two quiches, I'll divide the pastry in half. If your initial ingredients are correct, the total weight should be about 560 grams, that's 21 ounces. So each piece is about 280 grams, that's 10 and a half ounces. OK, if you haven't rolled pastry before, there is a couple of rules you need to know. Start by lightly flouring the work surface and form the pastry into a round, flat puck shape. Put a little flour on the rolling pin too. Now to keep the pastry as round as possible, roll it in a straight line backwards and forwards. Then turn the pastry 90 degrees and continue rolling in the same direction. Every now and then, throw a little flour under and over the pastry. Once the pastry gets a bit too big to turn by hand, then turn the rolling pin 90 degrees this time. Don't go off rolling in all directions or the pastry will end up totally out of shape. Just try to emulate my technique and you'll soon pick it up. The thickness you're looking for is about one eighth of an inch or three millimetres. 
Once you get it to the desired size, prick around the middle of the pastry with a fork. This will keep the base of the pastry flat as it's cooking in the oven. OK, pick up the pastry and place it over the top of the greased tin as shown. If you're not confident in picking it up with your hands, just roll it up on the rolling pin and then unroll it over the tin. Once it's on the tin, start to tuck down the sides as shown in the video. Make sure the pastry is pushed right down into the corners of the tin. If you have long nails, be careful you don't cut through the pastry or the egg mixture will leak through the hole. If this does happen, you can easily repair the hole with a little pastry patch from the trimmings using a little dab of water as glue. Now trim the pastry from the top of the tin, but be careful if you're doing it like me. Don't use a sharp knife, the one I'm using is quite blunt or dull. An ordinary dinner knife is ideal. Also, don't waste the pastry trimmings. I wrap mine in plastic wrap and freeze it, and I use them for future pie bases. Right, getting close to putting these quiches together. Before I start, I'll preheat my oven to 170 degrees Celsius, that's 338 Fahrenheit or gas mark 3. I'm setting mine to 150 because my oven is fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. OK, I'll begin with the quiche Lorraine. The first layer is half the cheese spread across the base of the quiche. Second layer is all of the boiled ham, making sure it's evenly spread out over the whole area. Next is all of the spring onions, same again, spread them out evenly. Next to go is all of those wonderfully crispy bacon lardons. And finally the rest of the cheese. It's important to spread everything out evenly. That way there's a bit of everything in every slice. And now it's time to carefully pour in the egg mixture I made earlier. Give the mixture a good whisk in the jug before pouring or all of the ground pepper will be left at the bottom of the jug. Fill it up to just below the top of the pastry as shown, as it will rise some in the oven. Right, that's the first quiche done. Now I'll carefully put that aside and get started on the salmon and broccoli quiche. Right, same as the first one, I'll spread some of the cheese over the base of the quiche. Next, I'll spread most of the broccoli over the top of the cheese, about two thirds of it. Next ingredient is that wonderful red salmon. I'll gently spread that evenly over the quiche with a fork. Next I'll put the rest of the cheese in, then the rest of the broccoli florets. If you see any larger pieces just break them down a bit. Then just the same as the other quiche carefully pour the egg mixture in and once again leaving it shy of the top of the pastry allowing for expansion when cooking. Right, to safely lift the quiches in and out of the oven, I like to use my rigid pizza pans. But you can use any baking tray as long as it's sturdy and doesn't bend easily. Ok, I'll place this one on top of the oven while I set up the other one on the tray. Time to quickly but carefully get the quiches into the preset oven and take great care not to spill any. Thank you. 
Once they're safely in the oven, I'll set the timer for 50 minutes. After 25 minutes, I'll turn the quiches 180 degrees for even cooking. Once the time is up, the quiches are set and ready to lift out of the oven and placed on a wire rack to cool for 10 minutes. As you can see, they have risen quite a bit. However, unfortunately, they don't stay like this. They will reduce in size to just above the level of the tin. After 10 minutes, the quiches need to come out of the tins and placed back on the rack to continue cooling. If you don't do this, the base of the pastry will become soggy. Now, to get them out of the tin and back on the rack, well, it'll be easier if you watch how I do it. Now, see that wet patch in the middle of the pastry? If you left them in the tins, that would just spread right across the whole base of the quiche. And by getting them onto the rack, that'll dry out once the air gets at it. Well, I hope you understood how I did that. Remember the pastry and filling is still pretty hot and very delicate at this point and this is the best and safest way to remove them from the tins and get them back on the rack. Right, it's been a good hour since I removed them from the tins and now it's time for a little taste test and have a look on the inside. I'll start with the salmon one. As you can see, it's soft, light, moist and looks absolutely delicious. I only wish you could smell it too. The broccoli is cooked perfectly and the colour is fantastic. Now here we go. And it really is delightful. Now onto the quiche Lorraine. As you can see, this one also looks very appetising. The light buttery pastry is set and is much easier to handle now. The egg mixture looks light and fluffy and the ingredients are evenly spread throughout each slice. And that's thanks to the care that was taken in putting it together. Right, I'll give this one a go. And the taste is incredible. The cheese and onion comes through and it has a slight smoky flavour from the bacon and that buttery pastry just melts in the mouth. This dish is well worth the effort and definitely gets the usual thumbs up. You really should have a try at these quiches. Once you get the hang of the pastry, it really is quite easy to do. Here's one of the meals we used to serve at work. Hope you agree, it looks amazing and tastes even better. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.